Okay, so this should be a short one. I just want to show you a new feature I'm excited about that's currently in the beta version of the uh, Dwarf Lab application for the Dwarf 2 and the Dwarf 3, which is a planning feature so that you can tell the telescope what targets to image throughout the night, with what filter, at what time, and then you leave it alone and the telescope will do all of that on its own and uh, it's very similar to what I've shown uh, as a game changer on my review of the Vaunis Vespera 2 not so long ago. And so I'm very excited to see it on one of the budget telescopes that are available to us, especially one that supports officially equatorial mode. And this is what I use by default pretty much all of the time with the Dwarf Lab Dwarf 3. By the way, it's mounted on its uh, little uh, tripod that is also sold by Dwarf Lab. It's not bad at all. A bit expensive, but it works well and it's makes it, it does make it easier to do the polar alignment. Anyway, let me show you how this looks like in the app and how do you plan your features once the final app uh, gets released out of beta, which, you know, by the time I publish this video might already be the case. I don't know. <laughs> so in the app, I'm connected currently to the uh, Dwarf Lab scope that just finished an imaging night via the planning and it finished this full night thing. By the way, you can see it says it's still shooting. Sometimes it has trouble uh, synchronizing the status of the plan to the what is actually happening. The one underneath test is also complete and yet it is like to be commenced. And I'm sure they'll fix that by the time of the uh, final result, a release. And once I go into uh, full night here, you can see that I can scroll down and see that it was on the 28th of November. And I started with the Andromeda Galaxy. Here it is. And I, saw, I set it to a shutter speed of 30 seconds, a gain of 60 and I told it to use the astro filter, the standard astro filter. And then I told it like, hey, go to the Orion Nebula. And uh, I told it again, 30 seconds, gain 60, but use the duo band filter. And then finally, let's do the Christmas tree cluster since it's available and same story with those parameters. So let me actually show you how it will work. So uh, I will go to my uh, schedules and I can do create a schedule. Then I can uh, enter a schedule name, let's call it like November 29th, and click save. And now I'm able to add stuff to do throughout the night. So I can tell the dwarf that, you know, I want to add a recommended target from a list of available targets for me that are supposed to be good for this particular night. So I don't know when the wizard nebula is visible, but it's er visible in the early evening. Uh, now we have from the sunset to the sunrise, obviously we want astronomical darkness. So I'm gonna put like one hour at least from the sunset before I start imaging. And I could say like, hey, yeah, let's do the uh, wizard nebula for this period of time. And because I'll be using equatorial modes, my uh, shutter speed will be 30 seconds, my gain uh, 60. And because this is an emission nebula, I actually want to use the dual band filter. Nice. And then I can save that. Then I can add another target. So again, I can put a recommended target and say like, yeah, let me try to go for, uh, I don't know, the California Nebula. And I could say, okay, I'll start right afterwards the uh, Wizard Nebula and I'll go until it's around this altitude here, maybe a little bit more. Let's have fun using the, uh, the high altitude of the Nebula. And again, I can set my shutter speed, my gain, and because it is an emission Nebula, I will tell it to use the dual band filter and save. And then I can add another target for the rest of the night, again, from the list of recommended targets. And let's say this time I want to do something broadband. So let's say Bode's Galaxy. And I can set the timing to be uh, up until like roughly one hour before the end, uh, before the sunrise. Uh, and shutter speed is going to be 30 seconds. And we're gonna use this time the astro filter. So a broadband filter rather than the dual band filter. And I can save. And now we have our plan for the night, the Wizard Nebula, followed by the California Nebula, followed by Bode's Galaxy. And then your next step would be to, um, right before you want to do your imaging, so tonight I would set up the scope, set it up in equatorial mode. So I've already have a video on the topic. Take dark frames as necessary if you need them. I already have a set that I'm, I can reuse. Uh, put the lenses so that they point at some stars that the Dwarf Lab can see. And then once with it, turned on, you can just uh, tap on uh, sync. The sync is complete and uh, I can just tap on OK, leave the dwarf 
as it is turned on, it will go to sleep automatically to save battery. Just to be sure, you could also plug in an external battery, that way you know you have enough juice for the night. And that's it. You leave the dwarf alone, it will do its own work. You don't have to do anything to follow it up. It's just an automated imaging platform that is also equatorial, and I love that. I absolutely love that. Just to quickly show you my last two nights of plans, we had uh, the Pleiades followed by M42 with a broadband filter, actually. I forgot to set the uh, dual band filter uh, during that night. And last night, I said, like, go for M31 first, and we do have a pretty cool final stack of M31. Then go for M42, and it did stack some uh, star trails, so I'll probably redo the stacking manually. Since I save all of the raw frames, I can do that and reprocess the image. And then, finally, the uh, Christmas tree cluster and nebula. And we can actually see the cone nebula here at the bottom. The whole Christmas tree is there, and I feel like I want to... Uh, Actually, I, I probably want to copy my previous plan and take those targets again so I can um, restack and stack more and more frames to get better and better signal to noise ratio. But this is awesome. We're able to basically have our whole night planned out. It's my little uh, imaging setup that I can put in a small backpack and take with me anywhere. And then I can image whatever I want throughout the night. How awesome is this? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Are you excited for this uh, little uh, update here on the Dwarf Lab, Dwarf 2 and 3, as far as I understand? Or do you have the C star and you wish the, that Zedrio will build a feature like this next? I'd love to hear that in the comments. Leave a like while you're at it. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to support the channel even more and you're planning on buying anything from Amazon, Agena, High Point Scientific, etc., if you do so after clicking the links that I have in the description, it will help me out at no cost to you. And otherwise, if you want to sponsor the channel directly and help make this channel possible, you can join my YouTube channel as a member. It's the join button next to the subscribe button, or you can join my Patreon as a supporter. The link is down in the description. With that, I hope this was a nice, uh, short, useful video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.